Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery. Things are a little bit dark. I just wanted to show what the place looks like during the day. Although it is kind of a dim, dark day because it's rainy and cloudy outside. But this is what the wormery kind of looks like when there's daylight coming in. Obviously, if there's strong sun blazing, uh, this side of the house faces south, so it does get a good stream of light coming in during the day. And I just noticed that here, in the bin that we're going to check in on today, there's not a whole lot protecting the worms from daylight. Although, you know, there is a whole bunch of paper scattered in right below the plastic. I thought it was just one little piece of paper, but actually it does probably seem like the worms have a nice cozy spot to be. Up near the surface, up near where the moisture collects under the plastic, that doesn't um, cause them to get scared off due to the, the light. Not that I'm seeing any out on the surface. Sometimes right under the plastic is a popular spot for worms in my bins. Well, if we're going to get started, I should probably put a glove on too, right? Is the system that's gone by many names lately. More recently, I think I refer to it as the small population or tiny population system. We've made references to how it was an attempt to resurrect a once thriving population with a very few number of worms. Up until recently we've been trying to work only a section of the bin with the plastic coverings so that only one area would be nice and damp by being beneath the plastic. And that was because we thought there was a, a really puny number of worms in here with a, a very low incidence of those worms bumping into each other and mating so we thought that by reducing the area in which they could roam or would want to roam we might increase um, encounters and possibly spur on some reproduction don't know if it's worked or not or if it's working or whatever the case may be but I hope it is so when we fed here last time 12 days ago we had given them a whole bunch of mushrooms that had started going bad in the refrigerator and they were even starting to exude that stinky rotting mushroom smell I saw a little bit of mold here I thought that might be a sign of the fact that you know mushrooms had been fed here recently I didn't know what to expect but I think mushrooms are one of those things that breaks down super quick and is something that the worms can munch on really quickly right away almost so I don't think we're going to find many leftovers, if we find any at all. We're going to see what we can come up with here. Some of the stuff I'm seeing in here, this lighter color material, might be coffee. Because the other thing that went in here besides mushrooms was coffee. You can see some kind of fresh bedding in here, but not a whole lot of it. Alright, well let's kind of do a more of a... A thorough plow through the whole feeding area to try to get a real sense of what happened here. I think number one is that they fed on and pretty much completed all of the mushroom they got. I don't think I see anything that resembles a leftover of a mushroom. I can see the leftover banana peel, the stem here. It goes back probably a number of feedings now because it does show pretty good signs of wear but it takes time for one of those to break down. All right, I'm glad we're checking in here. I, I guess I was reluctant to check back in here because I was just worried about opening up what had been the feeding area and then being faced with a, a big whiff of stinking, rotting mushroom. But then I also kind of had this hunch that it would be a, a kind of food that the worms would probably gobble up almost immediately and that I probably shouldn't have to worry about there being any residual remains of that stuff. And if there were any, I, I would think that it probably wouldn't stink. Somehow stuff in worm bins loses its original odor, doesn't take on any new odor. It just sort of becomes this really uh, neutral smelling thing. You know, there's really no odor in a worm bin, which seems so unusual. 
I took a pause there because I thought I might be able to see some cocoons. I, I felt like I had just sort of covered one up as I was sweeping a, a handful of material in that direction. I thought I saw I saw one, and then I thought it got covered up immediately afterwards by that um, motion. Just checking out the little signs of movement here. Now that things were d disturbed a little bit, but I've left it for a couple seconds. There's a really tiny worm down here. And here too, I can see the tail end of oh, tiny, tiny worms. So if there's tiny worms, you know, the tiny worms don't come out of thin air. These are somewhat larger looking worms, but not big at all. Small, mostly small little worms. That's always a really good sign if you want to see reproduction in your bin. Small tiny worms all over the place. Very, very good sign. See, tiny worm, tiny worm, tiny worm, tiny worm, tiny worm, tiny worm, tiny worm. I mean, I remember us going through this bin at times during its most trying times, I think. <laughs> and we had a, a hard time finding a dozen worms. And I think right now you can just push some material aside and you'll see a dozen baby worms almost in a, a single glance. So this is definitely um, an up-and-coming, nice-sized population. Just kind of shows you what a real small number of worms can do. <laughs> so since I didn't know what to expect here, I didn't bring food down. I'm going to have to make a quick trip to the freezer upstairs, get some stuff for them. And then we can get this system fed and put back together, let them continue with their work. But this looks really good so far, like what I'm seeing. It seemed to me like a little extra moisture would do this system good so I got some stuff that to me seemed like had pretty good moisture content these cucumbers for sure they're practically all water like mushy soft fruit like this kiwi pretty damp got some nice moisture content these chunks of pumpkin too I would assume once they start thawing out are probably gonna eject some of their moisture and even the coffee here still probably has some of the moisture from when it was originally brewed even though it's been sitting out drying for a little while, it's um, still got a little bit of moisture content to it. So in addition to kind of moist foods, um, the bedding we're going to use is also pre-moistened. All this stuff I've got here, stuff that's been sort of aging. This napkin was just a piece of soiled napkin, so this will go in here as bedding too. I think we're going to go kind of bedding bonanza today. So I was also thinking of replacing this top covering newspaper with something rather than using 18 separate objects. <laughs> so I thought that we can also introduce all of this stuff down into the feeding area too. Also some of these things we found, old chunks of food. I didn't want to put any worms in here because some of the stuff we're going to dump in next is frozen. It's, you know, these banana stems probably have little inhabitants so we'll exclude those two so this way we can feel safe about dumping in some of the food that they're getting today which is frozen See this thing too it just you touch it and it just tears into shreds so I don't even know if it's necessary for me to go crazy piecing it up into little bits it's already kind of falling apart on its own it's a little dry too so I think it'll help um, get it down where the moisture is going to be introduced by way of the foods. I'm even wondering if you know what, I've got the bottle right here. I got my little spray bottle that doesn't really get much use, but more lately I can't really keep saying that because the past few feedings it seems like a good idea to include a little water with the stuff I was putting in here. And there again, it's just based on what I was um, sensing as I was going through this stuff that it seemed like the system could benefit from a little bit of moisture. Gotta admit, it was only last week that we took the plastic coverings and extended it over the entire system. Half the system had been left to get pretty dry and I thought that the existing moisture in the system would trickle over and it seems to have done just that because the entire system feels like it's um, consistent as far as the moisture content in here goes, but it's also not only consistent but rather a low low moisture too it seems I mean not dangerously low I think we're still you know 
in a, in a bin that the worms are probably very comfortable in and don't have a problem being in. So I'm not going to sweat it. But if there's something I could do along the way, such as include foods that are moisture rich, then it seems to make sense to, to do it. This thing's really nasty. It's got this really gross <laughs> kind of film to it. Um, so yeah, it was it was getting pretty nasty, so I threw it right into the freezer so it wouldn't continue to degrade, but now that it's thawing out, it's starting to sort of melt almost. <laughs> All right, so I'm thinking we could uh, use some of my pre-made bedding to not only cover up but to also do something that I've been trying to do lately is try to help the coffee get commingled with the surrounding stuff because so the coffee just seems to just sit there in a chunk if it's not spread around I'm sure the worms dig it and pick up on it when it's spread around and just so, sort of falls into their way but if it's just in a mound I, I've got a feeling that they're not going to go digging through it Maybe they'll pick off a little bit of its outer surface, but all that stuff that's kind of hidden within the chunk is all going to get um, a little bit neglected. So I don't want to have that happening. So I think we could use this as an opportunity to inspect the outer edges of the bin too, see how moisture is doing. You can see how this stuff kind of crumbles pretty readily, and you might even be able to see how its color is a little bit um, lighter out here because it is a bit drier. But we did see a worm or two, like this guy over here. It's one of the bin's adult worms. Is hanging out over here and was over in the edge. But it does feel like a little, I found a couple more smaller worms down here. But it does seem to me like if there was additional moisture going on in here, there'd be a lot more worm action too. This little guy might have been part of what I dug out of here too. Now that I'm kind of letting things sit for a moment or two now I'm starting to see little bits of movement here and there too so I'm hoping that all this um, food that we just dumped in here all this stuff as it starts to break down and thaw from having been frozen etc so on here too there was like a lump of food or something that I just broke a whole bunch of little worms out of gosh so many more worms in this system any more than I uh, imagined it ever could have <laughs> in such a short period of time this is so cool so we've got a couple leftover banana stems here. And even though things were a little bit dry over there, they don't seem dan overly dangerous. And I like to take little baby steps. So I think all that stuff we just placed in here that has its own kind of built-in moisture content, the cucumbers and stuff like that, they're going to definitely help the entire system sort of get a little bit more rehydrated as it breaks down and having the plastic coverings over the entire surface are, are going to also help um, make sure that the moisture doesn't just stay focused just in one spot where the feeding had been placed but it'll really help um, distribute the moisture out evenly throughout the system which is kind of like a nice automatic thing that happens when you're covered up all right it was just a couple little things like chunks of coffee. I think I, I was actually, what I was breaking apart there was just a hunk of coffee that I just don't like finding sitting like that in a little boulder. So I'll break them up when I can. But more recently I've been doing my best to try to spread the stuff in with the neighboring materials so that it has a, a greater chance of, you know, getting broken down. All right. I mean, pretty tempting to just maybe leave <laughs> today's visit with a little shot of moisture too since moisture did kind of come up as a topic but man you got to admit this um this system in, is in no way um in danger anymore you know i think at times a few months ago when we had trouble finding even a handful of worms during one of our check-ins it did seem pretty touch and go but man i gotta tell you this is really surprising really surprising what a, just a few little wormies can do once you cut them loose into their <laughs> new habitat. 
So now besides this nice new fresh top covering newspaper to replace all that stuff that we sunk down into the feeding area is new bedding. And they got a lot of bedding today, didn't they? That was kind of a nice deal. Um, so the coffee filter is now sort of um, playing the role of showing us where we fed, which was down the middle in a, in a, in a row, kind of straight line across. And we can start bringing back the coverings here. I mean, the plastic's job is to help the moisture recirculate. And I got a feeling we just added a good amount of moisture, not only just like squirt, squirt on water, but also a bunch of stuff that as it starts to break down should bring with it um, a nice bit of moisture. And now another little bonus is um, a lid that I fashioned quite some time ago when I was breaking down a new box that I had obtained and I was transforming it into, you know, little sheets of cardboard, covers, shredded some of it. So they're getting a nice new top covering as well. So now I'm just left with one last thing besides, you know, cleaning stuff up and putting things away. It's the, um, it's the question about what do I do with portion number two? For some reason I thought I was coming down here to feed two systems, so I bought enough to feed evenly into two bins. <laughs> but now we're done, because this was the only system that I was planning to feed today. So, whatever. I guess I'm going to have to go visit my tracking spreadsheet and see if I can come up with another system that could use a, a quick feeding because I'm not going to put this stuff back into the refrigerator. No way. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.